Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. You're listening to Bulletproof Radio with Dave Asprey. Today's cool fact of the day is a little bit troublesome. It turns out that kids and teenagers who take stimulant drugs to treat ADHD can have lower bone density as a result of that. And as you know from reading Headstrong, lowered bone density is a result of changes in mitochondrial function as well as changes in the environmental thing like the amount of load that you have on your bones. And there's a new research study that says that people who have used these drugs might need lifetime monitoring of bone density so that you can see whether it's affecting them 10, 20, 30 years later. The researchers haven't yet said decisively that Ritalin and amphetamine are to blame, but they've drawn a very strong correlation there, and they're looking to see that it's something that is actually causation. So what does this mean? If you don't really need those stimulant drugs, you might try something else. Things like changing the environment around you so you have more control of your biology. We call that biohacking, and I've seen it work so well for thousands of people who have ADHD, or like me, who had Asperger's and ADD, when you get enough energy in the brain, it'll do what it's supposed to do. It's pretty amazing. Speaking of having your brain do what it's supposed to do, there's a brand new flavor of Bulletproof fat water. It's called Bulletproof Dragon Fruit Fat Water. If you haven't ever seen a dragon fruit, that's okay. You probably have and you don't know it. Anytime you see aliens eating fruit on a science fiction TV show, it's always a dragon fruit. There's these, these incredibly vibrant tropical fruits with bright pink it looks like alien seed pod kind of things. And the inside is either a pink or a white flesh that's vaguely like a kiwi fruit. Very, very cool thing. I first had one actually in Thailand on the same trip when I first discovered yak butter tea, which led to the creation of Bulletproof Coffee. I was really excited to put this into fat water. And you can get fat water on the Bulletproof website. And this fat water has brain octane oil in micro droplets. So instead of using sugar to get a little bit of energy, you drink this stuff. It tastes amazing. And you're using fat for fuel instead of sugar. And you feel really, really good. There's a few B vitamins in it there that also can help with mitochondrial function. If you like the podcast and you're having a good time with it, if you head on over to bulletproof.com slash iTunes, it'll take you directly to the iTunes page where you can leave a quick review and just say thanks for the podcast and tell other people that the podcast is worth your time because I work every single day, two episodes a week usually, in order to provide some real value for you. So if you can just do that one thing to say thanks, go to bulletproof.com slash iTunes and leave a review. It helps a lot of people, not just me. Today's guest is a friend, a guy I've known for several years, and a guy who was inspired to do what he does because his mom had osteoporosis. He figured out some biochemistry and looked at what he could do and ended up becoming a biomedical engineer and has done profound things there. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to bulletproof.com slash YouTube to get a quick link to the YouTube channel to see this. You'll see that he's kind of, I think, uh, built like a brick, something or another, kind of a solid looking dude. And that might be because he's done some things like hacking male testosterone optimization. The guy sits on the board of directors of the American Bone Health Institute. He's on the editorial board of the Journal of Steroids and Hormonal Science and Diabetes Open. And he's working on a couple really cool projects, one of which I was the first person to ever see. So I want to share some interesting facts about bones, muscles, hormones, and some other things like that that are going to be really, really impactful and useful for you. And also show you some new stuff that's happening out there that can make a difference for any of those domains of your own health and wellness. His name is John Jaquish. John, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dave. All right, John. We've talked personally about this. How did you get into all this at the very beginning? Tell me about your mom. Well, it was, yeah, my mother. Uh, <laughs> I was young. Uh, my, my mother, I was an undergrad. My mother came to me and said, I've been diagnosed with osteoporosis. So I quickly realized this is a disease of deconditioning. Anything that's deconditioned can become reconditioned. So uh, I looked into what research there was for people who were building like superhuman bone density. Who, who had the most? And it was gymnasts. So it really had to do with the way they would impact the ground. And another interesting thing about gymnastics from a research perspective is that we can see what a gymnast does. Their, their movement patterns as they strike the ground is very repeatable. They have to do it the same way every time, otherwise they injure. So very well practiced uh, as, as they do that. So uh, 
I wanted to create a device that emulated high impact forces. So it's the forces going through the musculoskeletal system that trigger the effect. And so I, I realized telling my mother to be a gymnast wasn't the right thing to do. But <laughs> yeah, she appreciated that too. <clears throat> but what we would do is uh, create a fixture where people could get into the positions they would naturally absorb high impact force. And then allow them to self-load and give them computerized biofeedback right in front of them. So they know where they are and where they were the last time they did it. Therefore, if an adaptation occurred in, their, in, that, in that particular kinetic chain, that they would be able to produce more force. So a sh showing a greater level of functional bone performance, because this is a functional test of bone, and, you know, and also a stimulus. So they actually be able, they're able to see the function of their bone from a deceleration perspective and from an actual performance and real world perspective as they use the product week after week after week. So my mother reversed her osteoporosis, but here's the thing that really nailed it home. And, and you know, now I'm uh, partnered with uh, Tony Robbins in, uh, in the project, it's called OsteoStrong. Um, there's gonna be clinics, there's already 50 clinics in the United States and there's gonna be, there's already agreements for hundreds more. <clears throat> and, and we're expanding to other countries. So what, we know about bone and what bone really is in terms of musculoskeletal health. If you have weak bone and you fire a muscle that's connected to that weak bone in that kinetic chain, there's gonna be neural inhibition because you can't engage a muscle to such a high degree where it will break the bone. Your central nervous system has a process called neural inhibition, you've talked about it before. Neural, neural inhibitory processes will stop the body from damaging itself. So by raising bone density to you know, a higher level, my levels is a plus two, uh, two standard deviations above normal, uh, that enables me to have a stronger chassis, which is taking away a limit of muscle growth. So, so weak bones equals smaller and weaker muscles. That's right. And that's because if you had strong muscles and weak bones, you'd break your bones. Right. It makes a lot of sense. Right. And you can use, I, I like using the automobile analogy. If you take a Formula One engine and put it in a Honda Civic, you just rip the thing apart. You just blow the wheels right off of it. So your central nervous system is smarter than the people who do that sort of thing and put a big engine in, a, in an economy car uh, because it's trying to keep you in homeostasis. But if you put the body in, in an environment where it is challenged, an extreme environment, then the body's gonna see that extremeness and make the adjustments, therefore, the entire musculoskeletal system will benefit. And people all over the world have had tremendous, tremendous gains, tremendous uh, things. The, the CEO of OsteoStrong uh, he had chronic back pain, chronic shoulder pain, uh, uh, not a frozen shoulder, but close. Uh, you're gonna meet him next week. <clears throat> um, his name's Kyle Zagrotsky, great guy. Uh, so he had all kinds of biomechanics problems, and he was even in the fitness industry. He, was, he, he had a bunch of different fitness locations, and he was one of the guys who was early days in curves uh, to, get that, to get that out there. Always look towards getting audiences that weren't already involved in exercise to try and get them excited about what they can do you know, from a physical medicine perspective. And so, so he just thought, oh, you know, I'm getting old. He's in his late 40s, and he had a lot of chronic pain. And he starts doing this therapy after we met, and instantly the pain went away. And it's because he's building, not, not just triggering a little muscular growth, it's the bone that's getting stronger and the associated tendons and ligaments in the whole kinetic chain. So for someone listening now, they're like, what the heck is going on that's causing strong bones? So I, I had an interview recently with the guys from Pulse Centers in Georgia, and they were using like pulse electromagnetic frequencies to drive bone density. Uh, and you've probably seen me on Facebook Live or on my Instagram page doing that on occasion. Mm -hmm. And that, that's one way to do it. But you found a, a way that takes probably less time than anything else I've ever heard of, like stuff that's almost stupidly effective. Yeah. How does it work? Like what is the OsteoStrong thing? It's a, it's a couple seconds. I mean, the actual okay. action of what's going on. So <clears throat> and people ask me, oh, it, it, the whole therapy protocol it takes 10 minutes. Nothing could take 10 minutes. You only do it once a week also because the metabolic rate of bone is longer than the metabolic rate of muscle. But by the way, that, that's one of the reasons I wanted you on the show is that exercising for an hour and a half a day, every day, six days a week, like I did when I weighed 300 pounds mm -hmm. and I didn't get results, it's a huge freaking waste of time. 
Like I want the minimum amount of exercise that's going to get what I want. And when you told me 10 minutes once a week in order to drive bone density and it works for your grandmother and it works for bodybuilders, yep. like that, that got my attention. And I know that you know your science because we know each other and we've, we've talked at length about stuff. Yep. So this is why this is disruptive. This is why this is biohacking and, and just worthy of talking about. So people go in and what the, you said, there's 50 locations and I've, I've seen the gear once. Mm -hmm. So what is just kind of describe what, what the process is and why you can drive bone density that way. So it's, there's four positions you go through and you sit in these fixtures that, uh, are, uh, the robotic. So you log in and it's got all your measurements and it closes in on you so that you're in exactly the right position. So it's highly calculated robotic musculoskeletal therapy. And then you basically like, let's say you're in an impact position, you push away from yourself and the movement you see is actually the compression of bone. It's not, the machine's not moving at all. And then you have a computer screen in front of you that's telling you uh, what your functional bone performance is in that kinetic so, movement. So you're doing something that looks like a push up, but it's a push up where you're on a seat that's not gonna move, pushing against a surface that won't move. Right. So all the energy goes into flexing and compressing the bones. Compressing a bone on its axis. Okay. So, you know, this is the axis of my clavicle. I wanna compress it this way. So you have to compress it from end to end, towards end the middle. To end to end. Right. So like every once in a while, I'll come across somebody who says, well, I foam roll for bone density. That's how I get the pressure on bone. And I'm looking at them like bone fibers are aligned a certain way. doesn't work. Right. Like right. Like I have to, like you do, like, do I really want to have this argument or <laughs> just go? Okay. Yeah. All right. So foam rolling has its place uh, for sure, yeah, for but sure. for bone density, that's not one of the technologies that I would necessarily recommend Correct. either. Yeah. All right. So you're doing what amounts to an isometric exercise where you're wedged into a place where you neither none of your body can move. So all the force has to compress the bones because yeah. you're aligned properly. Right. And so right. one is a push up like position. What are the other three positions that people? Uh, one is where the, the hips like the 120 degree angle behind the knee uh, where you're like you would strike the ground. Like a leg press, sort of like a squat. Yeah, like a like a leg press kind of squat kind of thing. Then there's another one for the core to distort the ribs. Now, the bone actually gets distorted slightly. So we have some stop motion photography that uh, I think it's on the OsteoStrong website uh, where you can actually see an individual, postmenopausal female, go from relaxation to compression, and you can see movement, but nothing moves in the machine. The movement is from the axial compression of bone. Wow. So you she's see actually, it. you can, you know, yeah, it's like some, some, uh, I was just having a conversation with, uh, like head of orthopedics, uh, in, um, Sweden, uh, or in this huge, huge, huge medical group. And so this, uh, this guy was asking me, like, do you think we could ever get some sort of like PQCT, which is a CT scan of like limbs where we could see a little bit of the compression, and this guy's so excited about learning. Uh, orthopedic surgeons always understand this because they understand the physical mechanics of bone and they also put screws and pins into bad bone and good bone. So right. they're very familiar with this. So the guy says maybe a you know, tiny CT scan of a bone and maybe we could actually see some of the compression. I sent him that picture. You can, you can see it with your eye. <laughs> you, don't even, you don't need a CT scan. So... Uh, <clears throat> So, Pretty so cool. you can compress your legs that way you, you do. So you do like a squat, you do a push up, and the other two positions, uh, there's one for the core, okay, where you're pulling down. The, the rib cage, and then there's one for the spine. Okay. And that's basically like a deadlift kind of position, but these are all, yeah. these are all without any actual motion other right. than, than compression <laughs> of your bones. Right. And you do, it takes about 10 minutes once a week. And the idea behind osteo strong is that the gear to do this is pretty big and heavy. So you, you're going to go into a location right. once a week for 10 minutes, like on your lunch hour or something, yeah. do this and then get a digital tracking of what's happening right. to your, your bone density and your strength. Cause they go up together. So your ligaments right. get better, your bones get better. And this is one of those ways of taking what would be uh, tens of thousands of dollars of gear and making it very accessible to people. $100,000 of gear. That's a yeah. $100,000 machine. Yeah, there it's you go. I don't have one. Expensive. Yeah, I don't have one at home. <laughs> no, no, you do not. <laughs> I would not recommend that. Yeah. Get a location near right. your uh, place in Canada. It, and also like 10 minutes once a week is not worth it. it like that that's a, that's a, that's right. enough to go do it, but if you're to, you're to spend 100 grand to have something like that at home, you probably should buy a Tesla. Right. right. I mean, you don't have a barber <laughs> chair at your house either. Uh, exactly. Right. So, but, but it's, it's a small enough amount of time with a big enough benefit that that's why I'm, I'm intrigued at this. 
All right, let's say that someone doesn't have an osteostrong location near them and they wanted to do some bone density stuff at home. Uh, what could they do to improve bone density now? It would be very difficult for me to ethically say that they ought to go out and do high impact exercise. However, <clears throat> some athletic people, uh, they may not be doing high impact activity or they may be and they don't know so another thing I created is an iPhone application called Fracture Proof. And what Fracture Proof does is you, you get download the application, and uh, the application actually benefits American Bone Health. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah. so trying to help the education system to try and get people uh, more up to speed on, on what they need to do to grow bone. So uh, a little bit of it goes back to a, a study that was done in Bristol, United Kingdom a couple years ago that determined and this, this is one of the most important things in this discussion, the minimum dose response. So like anytime somebody tests a drug, it's like how little of this drug, when you were, were experimenting with brain octane, how little of this do we need to trigger the intended effect? Right. So in increased cognitive abilities, if you're allowed to say that, I, I'm part of the company, so more, I am. More, more uh, mitochondrial energy does interesting go. things to the brain. I, I could say that. Right. Okay. So, uh, so the minimum. So there, this group uh, in in the United Kingdom, they did a study where they attached accelerometers to people, and then they had them go through high impact activities through whatever they did, uh, whether it was sports or some of the older people just, just went through their activities of daily living uh, or exercise class, kind of cardio type stuff, and tried to determine, or they did determine, with crossing the accelerometer data with regular blood draws, because you can test somebody's blood for bone turnover markers. Like if you go through high impact and we test your blood, if the impact is high enough, there are markers that show that there's been an effect of, of growth. Uh, uh, it's called the remodeling effect. <clears throat> so osteoclastic activity happens first, and then osteoblastic activity happens later. So uh, what was so profound about the study is they discovered what the minimum dose response for triggering bone growth is. Like, this is awesome. So, so is what like, is it? For, well, okay, let, but let me back up. For 100 years, uh, Dr. Julius Wolf, he had people jumping off of tables, and after they would die, and this is 100 years ago, after they would die, he'd get the cadaver and he'd right. saw... From jumping off the table? No. They, when they would <laughs> die of natural causes, <laughs> he would saw into their bone and, and look at it and say, okay, the people who went through high impact had higher bone density. So uh, it's the, called the law of mechanotransduction. Everybody who's been to medical school has studied this. So <clears throat> while he made that observation, he had no way to determine what that minimum dose response was. This is why every educational body recommends resistance to grow bone. Now, resistance in high impact is a lot different than resistance like at a gym. Because you, like a, a gymnast, for example, get 10 times their body weight when they slam against the ground from a, a dismount of like the uneven bars. So nobody goes to the gym and lifts 10 times. Nobody, hardly anybody lifts two times. In fact, according to the American College of Sports Medicine, Mo uh, the average of people who exercise on a regular basis, they load their lower extremities with 1.3 times their body weight. So if the minimum dose response, which was discovered in this study, was 4.2 multiples of body weight, that's what it was. That's the minimum. So, so you're saying lifting weights won't really affect bone density? Eh, it's, it's, it can happen. Uh, if you are at a very high degree, maybe if you're doing like strong range partials, maybe if you're also doing high impact. But, I mean, there's other variables besides the environmental signal that tells the bones to grow strong. Because if you're lifting, you're going to get more testosterone, bone density. You're going to get more IGF-1. You're going to get more growth hormone. You're going to get better circulation. You, you might right. change how you eat. You might right. get more vitamin K2. You'll get more collagen stimulus. But those are tiny things that affect bone density compared to well, the yeah. right loading, which is a huge signal sure. to grow. Those are building blocks, but you still need the signal. Like yep. a guy with high testosterone that doesn't do any exercise is not going to build big muscle. Right. So you can have the IGF, you can have the high testosterone, you can have the calcium, the vitamin D. If you're not putting load on bone, not a whole lot's going to happen. And right. That's been shown. And yes, there are some little degrees. Uh, usually calcium and vitamin D can slow down the loss. 
Yeah. Because you and, and you K2 know. seems to be particularly K2, important. K2, yeah, 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 another huge one. Okay. Uh, so what th- so what this study discovered this 4.2 multiples body mm-hmm. weight they determined that the people who failed to achieve 4.2 didn't grow any bone. They never had the turnover markers present with a high level of statistical significance. But the people who exceeded 4.2 multiples body weight did have uh, bone turnover, and so they were able to grow bone. What about things like the Bulletproof Vibe? One of the things that they use uh, whole body vibration for, and the reason we chose the frequencies that are in the Bulletproof Vibe is it's what NASA uses to help, to help astronauts get reconditioned after getting no stimulus on their bone in space. Right. So this is a vertical vibration 30 times a second. And I know you've, you've studied the whole body vibration space very extensively. Mm. Is there any usefulness for bone density for people who are already healthy with, with bone density there? And it's okay to say no. I mean, I, there, there's studies that go both <laughs> ways that I know of. So Yeah, the, the right answer is no. Uh, right. Well, but there's a but. <laughs> there are studies no, that go both ways. No, the vibration does not do anything for bone. What the vibration can do is increase the, somebody's biomechanics. So if somebody is uh, highly deconditioned, uh, very poor biomechanics, kyphotic, they can f- start to fire some of the stabilizing muscles. So then they can go on and, and do more impact-like activity, or they can do this osteogenic loading therapy. So, so on a typical vibration plate, <clears throat> how many times your body weight is going to happen at the bottom of the vibration? Just the body weight. Body weight. Well, no, there's acceleration. I mean, Nine point two meters to, per second. To have squared. it be relevant uh-huh. in trabecular bone, yep. you have to account for uh, the accommodation of skin being pushed together. Yep. You have to accommodate for the natural process of all the tendinous, ligamentous uh, material there, which is designed to decelerate mm-hmm. someone. Yep. And muscle is completely designed to decelerate you. Right. So the it's it's difficult to determine because a lot of the vibration manufacturers there's a lot of a, crap out there <laughs> they played a a a silly game with mathematics to mm-hmm. say that your you know gravity is six times normal when you're standing on the vibration plate that's ridiculous that yeah, that's like they the might case. as well put a blinking light on it and say you're 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 exercising at the speed of light <laughs> it, it's yeah it's it just and 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 i was involved with the vibration company and the the the, th- the stuff that is out there was appalling. Now, yeah, there's a lot nothing of stuff I was involved that, with. But, yeah, but there's yeah. a lot of stuff that will ruin your low back. And, and when I started experimenting like 15 years ago, I, I hurt my hips and my back with the side-to-side stuff, and I broke a couple machines. But I saw benefits. So that's why I ended yeah. up doing, doing it the way I did it. So you're saying that there are benefits to it, but they're mostly neurological yeah. and circulation based. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and I, I, I would support that. And there are studies that say if you have osteoporosis, if your bones are very weak, you can see benefits from it. But if you have strong bones, they're not going to give you superhuman yeah, but, bones. But see, the highly controlled studies mm-hmm. found no effect. Some of the poorer controlled studies mm-hmm. did see some effect. So I could say there was something nefarious going on. But what I think what was going on is... They didn't control the activity of the participants in the study. So if we take somebody who's kyphotic and Define doesn't have... Define kyphotic the, for the audience. Just yeah, hun- hunched over. Like some of the older people, they, they just have, or, or their, or, or their in, head is just translated in, a little bit. Anyone with an iPhone? <laughs> yeah, anyone who looks down at their iPhone. Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> um, so when you have poor biomechanics, you're not going to be able to absorb impact level force. So when you improve somebody's biomechanics and don't control their other activity through the whole period of the study, if you're going to study somebody's bone density, it's going to be over a long period of time. So, uh, you know, like it, right. you can't tell them, Oh, all of a sudden, if you feel fantastic, you're not allowed to go out and run around in a field and play soccer with your kids or something like that. So if all of a sudden they start improving their activity and that may have a tiny bone density effect. But even even the best studies that showed b- a bone density effect, which, I, like I said, they were the poorly controlled ones, it was, it, it's it was very minuscule. Yeah. It, it's more about lymphatic circulation. And I do see a lot of tightness when I, when I do it, like versus going for a walk. There's a mitochondrial stimulation and things. So I'm, I remain a fan of, of whole body vibration oh, done right. Oh, oh, but it, for bone density, it's not a strong signal compared to jumping off tables or in the case of what you're doing with osteo strong, right. loading the bones properly. Right. And I, I definitely like you can you just you feel it when you do it. It's a very different kind of exercise yeah. uh, than lifting weights when you're doing yeah. osteo strong. Yeah. So yeah. 
All right. Cool. So people, osteostrong will become available for people, and I'm assuming it's osteostrong.com. Yeah. Osteostrong.me. Dot me. Okay, cool. And and that's something that you're partnering with Tony Robbins on. And, yeah. And okay, well, let's talk about Tony for a minute. Cause I, I've I'm fortunate that Tony's okay. invited me to speak at his Unleash the Power Within right. conference. I'm on the regular agenda now, so I speak to like 15,000 people on a regular that's basis. Awesome. It, it yeah. Just blows me away. You know what it's like. Uh, and Tony, when you go backstage, he's got a trampoline, like a mini trampoline. And yeah. I, I don't know any human being, and I know a lot of crazy madmen out there um, who has the raw energy production ability of Tony Robbins. Like he throws off heat. He's got air conditioners blowing on him on stage mm -hmm. and he's just, he's, he's emoting. He's like sending a yeah. signal, but backstage he's got every piece of biohacking gear, everything he can to just give him more energy. Yep. And right there is a trampoline. Mm -hmm. What are the effects of rebounding on bone density? Because it's cushioned at the bottom. Very little. Yeah. Yeah. That's now, you might get ligament improvements though from vibration and bouncing, or does that also require the same thing? That's not as researched. Okay. So it would be difficult to say. I could guess. Well, there would be more of one. So, so you're, I mean, you're, you're a research professional. Uh, you've, you've been studying yeah. this stuff your whole life. You've worked with pro athletes and lots and lots of people. So whether or not there are studies in your experience, what would you guess given that you know more than almost anyone else and you've seen more than almost anyone else right. and you had to flip a coin, what side is it going to land on? It would land on the tendon and ligament improvement. Side. Okay. I, I tend to think that's right too, but yeah. I don't have anywhere near your level of experience in that yeah. part of it. So it, it seems likely. All right. What it's, it, one of the problems here is mm -hmm. that it, it's like um, no one does cancer studies on uh, diets with a lot of high fat and vegetables, right? Yep. Because there's not a lot of business to be done. Yep. Like nobody's going to sell a product that's going to potentially make a trillion dollars or billions of dollars or something like that. Uh, to tell people to go eat vegetables and high fat diet, right? Yep. So we're just not going to get that level of study. Right. No, we're not going to get a pharma it. level study there. Yeah. So that's the okay. problem with all physical medicine interventions like that. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. And frankly, if you have a study that says a food has a medical effect on you, you're not allowed to speak about it because then you're accused of selling food as a drug. So a lot of the research that exists around things like collagen or brain octane, I'm legally forbidden to tell you what it actually does right and and <laughs> to insane. make things even worse if you did a clinical trial on it they would say oh this needs to be controlled but yeah, yeah, i still can't say it if yeah, I, you still can't it say me it. Nuts. so even if you do everything right and play by the fda's rules then you're just fenced off in another area so yeah so, so I, I can tell you it makes you feel good yep <laughs> you can say that now you're working on another project which is one yes. the one I mentioned at the beginning of the show. Yep. I, was, I was the first person outside of your your the company. First guy I showed. I couldn't wait to get it to you. Yeah, you you flew up to my house actually, Bulletproof Labs Alpha there, mm -hmm. and I played with this and was like, wow. We ended up testing it with four different people on the Bulletproof team. <laughs> These were the only four prototypes in existence. We did it for about six weeks. All of them were like, can I keep this? And, and you're like, no. Yeah. <laughs> and you took it back. A, a few of them. <laughs> so the prototypes cost two thousand dollars a piece yeah. to build. And a couple of them, two of them said, I'll give you $2,000 if I can just keep this. Yeah. Of course, I needed it. So yeah, this, like, this oh. was very early stage startup yeah. stuff. So this device is called the X3. The X3. And, and I keep wanting to call it Triple X because, and now I, I got to just tell you guys this. John is an incredible research scientist. He's, he's got biceps at least as big as my head and uh, knows what he's uh, knows what he's doing but he wanted to call this product triple x and i'm like john that might have a connotation he's, he's like but it makes you grow muscle three times as fast as lifting yeah, weights there's, there's research that says that <laughs> so yeah. i i think x3 was the right name well for i thought triple x would be like a controversial name <laughs> and it would be right <laughs> like everyone's gonna like laugh when they hear that name right. and, oh yeah i gotta check that out and they'll remember it problem was from a search engine perspective, that's, that's like the worst you. thing you can do because yeah. just like anybody it, will find. It'd be like the shake weight. It'd be terrible. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, call it X3 because right. of the, the, the gains come uh, three so, times as fast. So in all of your research on, on bone density mm -hmm. and on muscle building, just being a bodybuilder and working with a lot of the, the top bodybuilders, some of whom have now endorsed this thing. Yep. Uh, and I, I'll just say my, my deal is I would love to work out less 
and get all the benefits because I have stuff to do. Like I'd rather record another episode of this. I'd rather go like this morning. I took my kids to the zoo. <laughs> if I could get another hour of time to go to the zoo versus hit the gym, I'll take that. Right. right? So how do I put muscle on and just maintain muscle? I, I don't want to, I don't want to look like a bodybuilder. Right. Uh, and if I decide to, then I'm going to commit more time and more effort. But in the meantime, I want to maintain the almost muscular physique, right. uh, which is the one that I think is going to help me live the longest. Sure. So, the way to do this uh, that you discovered involves loading the muscles in a different way than gravity and weights does. Can you walk me through that? Right. So when you, well, let me, let me walk back a little bit and okay. talk about uh, some of the bone density research. Sure. So <clears throat> one of the uh, later studies that I did on, on the, on bone density, I, I just wrote the protocol and I, I had a hospital in London do the research, and uh, it was published in the Journal of Osteoporosis and Physical Activity. Um, great journal, by the way, because they cover physical medicine. Uh, so <clears throat> what we discovered was that we've, we've always known, and it's been talked about, is r in range of motion. So like if I'm going to push something away from myself, let's say a bench press bar, when it's laying on my chest, I can handle, let's say, X. But when I push it further away from me, like let's say halfway up, it's more. We all know we have greater capability. Mm -hmm. So when we select a weight, like in the gym, to do weightlifting with, we will select the weight that we can handle in our weakest range of motion. And while it's been known what the difference is in the capability, what was discovered in that study, uh, a guy named Basil Hunt, who's a, a clinical psychologist uh, in the in the uh, United Kingdom uh, healthcare system, he was absolutely blown away at the differences. Remember, I said 1.3 multiples of body weight is what people, on average, load their hips with. Well, what we see in that study and and in the data in general is that people actually load the the hips in a maximal perspective, in an impact deceleration perspective at nine times their body weight. So, so translate that into English for people listening who don't know what maximum. I'm going to, okay. right. So <laughs> all that stuff I said, forget all that. What you need to remember, the takeaway here is you are seven times more powerful in your strong range of motion than you are in your weak range of motion. There you go. Right. So if I'm going to do a bench press, basically I'm losing a, a magnitude, huge multiple of the growth potential because whatever weight I pick, I can handle in the weak range of motion, which means in the strong range of motion, it's not really doing anything. So, and this is the problem. And, and because in conventional lifting, we pick a static weight, we're only stimulating in the weaker range of motion, which is also where joint damage happens. So the guys who try and train heavy over and over again, they have tendonitis, they have all kinds of damaged joints, biomechanics problems. Uh, when you go to a powerlifting event, a lot of the older powerlifters, they're walking with canes. And you kind of look around and you say, this sport was about health, right? Like, no. <laughs> excuse me, guys. This, this, this was about power. <laughs> this was about health, I thought? I don't know. Like, so, uh, I mean, it's, I, while I, I love powerlifting, oh, fascinated it's, by it's it, amazing, I always have yeah. been. Um, it's, why don't we, and the que question, when I, when I looked at this research data, I thought, why don't we, why don't we develop something that is accommodating? Why can't we have a variable resistance product where in the weak range, we have a very low amount of weight to protect joints, and in the strong range, we have a weight that we could never unrack at the gym, much higher. And, uh, and then I took it a step further and built a protocol around this. So, and this is another takeaway, diminishing range with variable mm -hmm. resistance. So when you do it, you never lock out, you don't, because you lock out, you turn the muscle off. It's a very confusing system for your central nervous system and it ends up doing nothing. So let's say I go to full extension. Let's say with uh, one band that I have, uh, you know, this one. So uh, band, just, just, we haven't talked about that. So what you're using is custom made bands <laughs> yeah. with a, a really interesting ball bearing device that allows you to, to not twist your joints as you're doing. Right, like, right. So you can buy resistance <clears throat> bands for like, I don't know, 30 bucks or something, but they don't do what this does. At right, all. right. So the bands are special in that they're layered latex okay. as opposed to molded rubber. Yep. Uh, so the power behind them is, is very different. It's 
kind of dif- difficult to explain that over the internet. People see a tiny video and they see a rubber band and it's like, isn't that the right. same as all the other ones? No, you, you had to custom make the band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so what we do is we vary the resistance. So let's say I have 80 pounds when it's on my chest and on a bench press, it's okay. 200 pounds. Yeah. On a bench press, um, 200 pounds when I'm halfway away from me to full extension. And then it's 350 pounds when I'm at full extension. Let's just say that that's what the power curve is. And that, that's what it is when I use, cause I tested it with a load cell right. when I use that, that particular band. So let's say I go through 10 repetitions and all of a sudden I can't hit that 350 anymore. Now I've built up to this, like this sure. hitting 350 at the peak is not what people do on day You're one. You're a pretty solid guy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it's, <laughs> I'm going to pat myself on the back. I'm ridiculously strong. <laughs> um, so I, I'm able to go to this 350 until right. like, let's say 10 repetitions right. and then I can't get there. Then I diminish the range. So you don't push as far. Right. Right. And so I can only go like, let's say halfway and I do, uh, maybe another five or six repetitions that are halfway to where I get to the 200 pounds. Then I'm too exhausted to do that. And, and there's no pause at the bottom. You never unload the muscle. N- right. Exactly. That's important. Constant tension. Yeah. So it's constant tension. It's for, first variable resistance uh-huh. with the heavy bands and the very particularly made bar that'll handle uh, hundreds and hundreds of pounds that has the has an Olympic bar function. So you can it, it swivels. So if you turn your wrist, you don't lose grip on it. That's that's huge. That's that's part of why this this was such a such a profound thing. And uh, then there's also a, a ground plate to hook it to the ground. So you can do the, the, the curls and things like that. Right, so, right. So we go through a range of motion. We're doing this on video live. We're actually at the, the BN Limited yeah. Bulletproof Conference. We're doing holotropic breathing with Stan Groff and things like that. So if you want to watch this on video, bulletproof.com slash YouTube will give you the link. But we'll talk everything through. So if you're driving or you're at work, you don't have to watch the video. Right, right. But, but it's, it's this heavy bar about two feet across with extremely heavy hardware on the ends. You could just fit it in your luggage, it looks like. Yeah, uh, it's 21 inches. 21 you drop inches. drop it right in a, okay. in a carry-on. And it weighs, what, six pounds, eight pounds? Eight. Eight pounds. And it's, it's a solid thing, and it's got these swiveling hooks on the ends that hook to some bands. And I can tell you, having done this for that, that time about 18 months ago, yeah. You do this for like five minutes. You feel like you're going to die. Like you get dizzy from it. And then when you're done, you got to sit down. You do one set and you have, because the level of exhaustion that with the the variable resistance, of course, it's a, it's a deeper muscular stimulus, keeping the constant tension. That's huge. And then the third thing is the diminishing range. So you end up the, the end of one set you, you have one inch repetitions where you're just exercising the weaker range of motion. So you fatigue all ranges of motion simultaneously in one set. It is, and as we it's know, brutal. <laughs> triggering, triggering an adaptation in the human body, typically, the greater the stimulus, the greater the response. You don't get much of a tan on Christmas Day, but you will in July. So you don't have to be outside for very long. So the exposure to the stimulus, the more intense you can make that. And so we're, we're basically tricking the body into being able to put tremendous forces through the musculoskeletal system with very little risk of injury. And then trigger, and then going through that full range of motion, triggering massive muscular growth. It's uh, it, it's a interesting thing. What I would do is I would have my bulletproof coffee in the morning, and then I would do this uh, basically around twelve or one exactly when, I, when I'm in a fasted yeah. state. So I've got nothing but ketones from the bulletproof coffee, mm-hmm. uh, and then I do this. And afterwards, it's like I got to eat now, yeah. <laughs> and I'd go eat. Yeah. All right, this now I so this is very very controversial with all the <laughs> all the things I've sure. seen online. Yeah, uh, now, m- people haven't experienced it, and w- are their exposures? They see a video that's you know one inch by one inch and a half on on their phone screen, so it's very difficult to see the complexity and quality of the product. And so when I say I put on thirty pounds in a year of muscle, and I drop body fat at the same time, like some of these. I think they call them bro lifters, you know, or bro science or whatever. Oh, the science trolls, yeah. Yeah, yeah, where they they read an article by Arnold, which was written by not Arnold, but had his name on it in, you know, the 1970s. Uh, And they assume they know absolutely everything there is to know about every nuance of human physiology. (laughs) Uh, And, you know, God bless them. They're, they're, They're nice people. They mean well. They think they're protecting their friends from some goofy product, but 
It's not goofy. There's a ton of science behind it. And yes, I did put on 30 mu- pounds of muscle in a year. You are looking substantially Oh, yeah. Like since the last time, time you yeah. saw me. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I've even been filming the 12 week program. So we have a fr- uh, free 12 week program uh, yeah. with, the, with the product. Um, I've been filming the 12 week program. And even in the videos from week to week, there are users of the product who bought the pre order who have been saying, like, I actually see you getting bigger every week. So I, I got to tell you very clearly, John, X3 is a scam because I, I put on <laughs> I put on 30 pounds of muscle in six weeks and I didn't go. exercise anymore. Right. Actually, I did, but I was using SARMs. Yeah. So. <laughs> but, and you're not just that's right. the reason I bring this up. Yes. You're you're not doing that. Uh, you're not using SARMs. I you're, have not experimented with SARMs. So, so it's uh, what about testosterone? Uh, I do. So I had low testosterone when I was younger. Sure. I had it since I was 26. So. 28 for me. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. So yeah, you, yeah. you take physiological doses of it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And, and what physiological doses of bioidentical testosterone do is they make you live longer and like your life better. And yeah. anytime someone out there says, oh, you're taking testosterone, it doesn't matter. Actually, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah. This is an anti-aging therapy. You get therapy. such a little dose. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't tiny. do any. I mean, you feel better. Yeah. You, but grow, you grow. You, I don't you, know. you don't get big from that. What you do is you don't lose muscle. If yeah. You, you get the prescription. Most people get the prescription when they're like 40 or 50. Um, in fact, uh, part of the reason that I really got excited about this product was uh, working with, uh, I'm a head of, I'm a clinical director of physical medicine for uh, Titan Biomedical. So uh, that's, a, that's a lab that prescribes testosterone. And it was funny because c- people would get a prescription for testosterone and they wouldn't see any results at all. Yep. And I had a friend at Cenogenics that said the same kind of, that's sim- similar type, type of uh, service said the same kind of thing. We have patients that just don't gain any muscle at all. Yeah, they're happier and they're probably better in bed, right. but they don't gain muscle. <laughs> right, yeah. right. And so, and, and also I think frequently they think they're going to look 18 again. And there's, there's some, you know, unrealistic expectations yeah. that are often even at, on the fault of the, the person who's, yeah. who's, who's it, going to stuff helps. And, and it really can improve your outlook on life if right. you have the, the low testosterone right, males. You're syndrome. not going to put on a ton of muscle. Yeah from testosterone therapy. So, um, so I, I was always an athletic muscular guy. Uh, and then, and then when developing this thing, I, I had just ridiculously awesome results. So I, I, yeah. I have, uh, we have no uh, formal affiliate or anything like that. I, I, no. I'm an advisor to a couple of companies making interesting muscle developing stuff. I'm not efficient advisor here. We're just friends. We're, we're talking about this stuff. Yeah. So, uh, this is, but I'm guessing it's x3.com. I don't actually x3bar.com. know. x3bar.com. x3bar.com. Yeah. I can tell you guys, this is legitimate stuff. I'm really impressed with it, which is why I wanted to have John on. And plus, I mean, you know a thing or two here. <laughs> it, you've, you've studied this extensively. You've mm-hmm. looked at the effects of whole body vibration. Uh, and you've looked at the effects of of what happens when you don't allow the muscles to relax, when you just kill them the way <laughs> the right. X3 bar does. Well, yeah. And I, I felt it. I tried it. So I, I think this is one of those time-saving things that, that maybe pro bodybuilders, I guess you have some pros who are now using this, can use. But also just normal people, whether you know, you're, right. you're, you're a stay-at-home mom who's like, look, I don't have time to work out. I want to, I want to deal with my kids. And this happens a lot. Actually, I, I hear it happened to my wife. Yeah. Like, I used to have a yoga practice. I used to do all this stuff. <laughs> and now like, the demands of life are just too much. But I still want to maintain my muscle mass because it's important. To, to feel good. Well, r- remember, one of the reasons we're friends, I remember the first time you called me, uh, I think it was like a two and a half hour conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not even sure where you got my number, but it was just like, hey, this is Dave Asprey. Like, really? I, I uh, called 1 900 Big Muscles and you answered. Yeah, I, I didn't there even, you go. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, so I, uh, we talked, and it's not even just the things that we're working on. I mean, while they're different, they're they're going towards a very common goal of what you just said, but also they're optimizing. So like I didn't want to develop this so people could save time. I wanted to create the absolute ultimate serious strength training thing. Yeah. You're a perfectionist. That would, yeah. Yeah. And, and a part, a part of it is like a, a lot of people have said that this is a little overbuilt <laughs> and my, cause it, it handles over 500 pounds. In fact, I got a video uh, on YouTube where I'm doing 500 50 pound, I had a load cell in the mm-hmm. middle of the chain. Um, I mean, between the band and the, and the, and the bar, uh, 550 pounds for reps. Not everyone's going to do that. But I wanted to show that, that something like this, that this with variance and resistance 
could make somebody as strong as possible because now we're leveraging what we've learned about the human body in the differences of the capability and range of motion. So, uh, I mean, th this is, this is this anybody who says, oh, it's, it's too expensive or whatever, and I say, what if it's the last fitness dollar you ever spent? So, then so is it too expensive? Yeah. And you're charging about 400 bucks for this? Uh, 429, yeah. All right, good deal. Yeah. And I can tell you, I don't have one of, of these. I tried the original prototype, which looked a little different, but it was pretty similar. Yeah. Um, this was back uh, quite a while ago. Yeah. So I'm about to get one of these things. And I guess that we do have a financial relationship. You're giving me one for free, right? There, there you <laughs> yes, go. I am, I've I been am. bought, guys. But I, I, I am truly impressed. It, 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 I mean, I, I have... I have gear that costs up to 45 grand. Actually, one piece of gear is $130,000 that improves uh, stem cell production in right. my labs at home. So I'm, I'm willing to- I think I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. and, and I'm, I'm willing to, uh, that's the CVAC, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and I'm willing to, uh, to not, I drive a pickup truck, not a, some sports car or something. I've been to your pickup truck, uh, nice. <laughs> it's a nice truck, but, yeah. but like I, I put my, I put my, my R&D dollars into things like this. Yeah. And I can tell you for the money, this, this, blows my muscles out in a way that, you know, $15,000 electrical stem doesn't, yeah. even though I'm a big fan of electrical stem still. And I, I have multiple technologies to do this. I, I also like the computer driven resistance things. Mm -hmm. uh, but this uh, for, for travel and for people who don't have a lot of space or want something that's much more economical, I think this absolutely deserves uh, real attention yeah. uh, as Thanks. a biohacking device. And that's, yeah. that's why you're here. So uh, what else can we talk about? Let, let's say that, that someone doesn't have access to the X3 and they want to put on uh, uh, some muscle relatively quickly uh, using more traditional stuff. They have well, a choice of Nautilus machines or 24-hour kind of machines, or they have a choice of bars or jump ropes or something. Like, like what's, what's the best option? Yeah, well, part of it is if there was an easy way to accomplish that objective of variable resistance, really like uh, uh, the highest degree, like what we're doing, if there was a way to do it, I wouldn't have bothered to build a product. I would have just advocated whatever that was. Well, so we've got like the Doug McGuff body weight exercise, you know, the, the real slow things like that. That seems to be effective in a, in a smaller amount of time, yeah. at least for average muscles. I, you, no one's using that, I think, to just get, you know, completely bodybuilder grade. But right. if we're looking at that equation, which is how do I get enough in, in a minimal amount of time? Right. Any recommendations for that? Hmm. There's, there's, I mean, without recommending, has so much garbage out there. There's so, <laughs> so much bad advice. Uh, well, so let's let's say uh, you've got maybe uh, body weight exercises. I, I mean, should I be doing slow push-ups, fast push-ups? I, I mean, get, give me the what, what okay, I get on the road. So, so <laughs> slow is always better okay. in, in any type of movement uh, because you get stability firing. Okay. And what I tell people who like to bounce the bar off their chest when they uh, do a bench press or they're kind of the CrossFit style pull-ups uh, where they let their body weight drop and then bounce off their bicep tendon as they try and jerk themselves back up. You can probably tell my, by my tone I'm not a big fan of that. Though, though CrossFit's doing a very good job I, of cleaning that kind of stuff I, up. Yeah, it, I mean, it, very it's, good job. I would say that the CrossFit trainers that I've <laughs> met and worked with they're very focused on form. Yeah, and last two years. The yeah, just, just well, well, let's face it. it. If you run a CrossFit gym and you aren't well enough trained to focus on form, you're not going to run a successful gym because people get injured. Yeah, but when you train them right, they'll become very strong, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> so so uh, I'm a CrossFit fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it, it, t body, body weight exercises, um, I'm probably mostly a fan of balance and stability type stuff. And I, I say this to bodybuilders, and I mentioned a friend of mine, Phil Hernan. Right. Um, who, uh, he was a 1996 Mr. USA. Awesome bodybuilder. Uh, he runs a really successful uh, supplement business now. And uh, he's uh, just one of these really mindful uh, individuals who offers his help to aspiring athletes and bodybuilders basically for free, though he does, he does train some. He's training a few of the top uh, uh, bodybuilders right now. But... Uh, he is, uh, geez, I lost my train of thought. Why did I bring that up? Uh, because we're looking at what you could do without. Oh, the oh, right. So, so Phil, I, I shared a bunch of research that I had come across and then, uh, a study that got published last year in, uh, the journal of steroids, uh, and, uh, hormonal health with, uh, Henry Alkire. He was my, uh, it's, he's instrumental in, in putting these, these, uh, projects together he, he works with me 
And so I, I showed Phil this research, and this goes back a little bit full circle to uh, the, the vibration. So stability firing. Stability firing is one of the primary mechanisms that triggers growth hormone. That's what you're really doing on vibe. That's what you're doing when you do a one-legged squat and try and balance yourself. When you have to stabilize. And, and this is like when you draw a line on a piece of paper and you draw it really fast, it's easy to draw it straight because you're using mm -hmm. momentum. When you draw a straight line very slowly across a page, that's harder because you're actually yeah. firing stabilizing muscles to keep that line straight. And that's the way you need to look at your lifting because you don't want just the primary actors. Like when, I, when I'm pushing something away from myself, it's not just my pectorals. It's all the stabilizing firing because – not only from a safety perspective, when all those stabilizers are enacted, they're protecting me from injury. But secondarily, when a stabilizing, when a muscle fires without your intentional action, it's called a spinal reflex. So it means a tendon is moving and you're not moving it. So the body fires that muscle to protect all, all the joints around it. So when that happens, when that spinal reflex firing happens, uh, especially in a rapid succession, growth hormone goes up. And so uh, Henry Alkire and I did a study where we looked at all uh, 23 different data sets. So it's a meta-analysis. Does everybody know what a meta-analysis is? Uh, I'm guessing most listeners do, but in case okay. you don't, meta-analysis is something where researchers look at all of the other studies, decide which ones are worth paying attention to, and look at, say, well, there are 25 studies, five of them were crap. The 20 that were any good, this is what they found. Right. Yeah, exactly. So just, just ramming a bunch of research together and using statistics to determine a, a better answer. Uh, also, it takes a lot of biases out. If you had one biased researcher or somebody who was maybe looking at the wrong variables or something. Funded by Monsanto and willing, right, right. willing yeah, to just some lie blatantly. Funding conflicts or something like that. Uh, so, so 23 data sets all came to the same conclusion. Uh, which was stability firing rapidly increases uh, growth hormone. So, so this would imply that if you're using the Bulletproof Vibe, you'd want to... Actually, well, uh, this is what I did when I was using the X-ray prototype. I would stand on the Vibe, and mm -hmm. I would do the exercises with the prototype. Yeah. Is there a value to doing that, or was I just trying to double down because I'm lazy? No, it was absolute value. Oh, okay. In fact, in fact, like if you go through the X3 12-week program... Uh, it gets more and more aggressive, not only with the heaviness of the band that you're using, because that, that has a lot to do with stability firing, too. You yeah. don't need a stability fire when you just stand on one foot. But when you stand on one foot and then you bend your other knee so that your, you know, your femur is parallel mm -hmm. to the ground, right. you got a lot of stability firing there because that's, that's tough. So we, we definitely um, go through that 12-week program we're, we're shifting people towards the stability-based exercise. So we start with two-legged squat, and then people migrate to a split squat where they just basically have their toe on the ground behind them, okay. and they're putting the band, and they, and they got the, the bar across their shoulders, like a, like a front squat loaded uh, position. So they're putting massive forces through one leg, but the core is totally lit up. If we were to do a electron myography on those mm -hmm. muscles, you'd see firing just like crazy through the whole core which is, that's, that's tremendous, and th that's going to up upregulate growth hormone. All right, so you would suggest for people who are exercising without X3, without any special gear, without the Bulletproof Vibe, um, if they can do things that engage stabilizing muscles. And yeah. these would be body weight exercises, certainly. One-legged squats. Okay. It, it's, it's, I, I say this to trainers, and they look at me like, they're, like they're, I'm, I have two heads. I say, do you do, fun do, do uh, uh, two-legged squats with your with your clients and they all say, of course, it's the most functional exercise. And I said, oh, you must train kangaroos because people <laughs> walk on one leg at a time. Right. So we're most, if we lose our balance, we generally don't have two feet firmly planted on the ground. Okay. We lose our balance when we have one foot on the ground. So it would make the most sense to train on one foot at a time. That is not what we do, but it's just, there's a lot of things that we don't do that are that are just kind of the common practice, which is why, you know. Yeah, well, well that's a, a lot of your career has, has been. Right? What's the yeah. very best way to do this, right. Versus the way we do it. And that's, and that's that was the impetus yeah. behind X three and and uh, and and osteo strong, 
Same thing. Th- that's why I, yeah. that's why I like to hang out with you because you're yeah. you're a perfectionist that way. Awesome. All right, uh, let's do two more things. One, I've got to ask you the question that I ask everyone on Bulletproof Radio, mm-hmm. and then for people who are watching on video, let's actually have me do a couple curls or something just to just to demonstrate the thing. Yeah. All right, and uh, I've lost some of my some of my gains from the SARMs. Uh, which happens when you stop using SARMs. Yeah. Uh, but it was uh, it was still a fun experiment. But I'm still reasonably strong. But I just I want to play around with the thing. And do me a favor, don't blow me out because I'm interviewing two of the world's top spiritual and meditation masters uh, after this okay. at the Beyond Limited event. So I don't want to go to sleep when we're done. So we'll just do a light workout. Okay. Uh, but before then, and that's I'm not sure we'll put that on the radio show, but that'll be on bulletproof.com/slash iTunes. Yeah. And sorry, bulletproof.com slash YouTube is where you go for that, just to get a link to all the, the channel. Uh, and then f- let me ask you the question. If someone came to you tomorrow and said, John, based on everything you, you know in your life, exercise physiology, bioengineering, and mm-hmm. not, what are the three most important pieces of advice you'd have for me if I told you I want to perform better at everything I do as a human being? Three most important things. What are they? Well, one would be the first one actually would be the order that we just went through them. Be like, be mindful of bone density. Okay. And I uh, mentioned fracture proof is a good way to figure out if you are capable of hitting the ground and, and functionally uh, switching on bone density. And then, okay. then that's an iPhone app. That, that's an iPhone app, right? Okay. But, but so you right. tell people, so watch your bone density. And, and that actually could, could sound like you're like, okay, bone, bone density matters so much. But the reason for that would be that bone density drives almost everything else in the body. If you have right. weak it's bones, you're Right. It's the chassis weak. that your yeah. engine okay. sits on. And Got it. Right. Uh, addressing bone density is an absolute key to performance. Cool. And, and that's and something that Tony Robbins, like when he looked at like my talk track, like how I would go, not just speak at medical conferences, I do that, and it's very different. I got to really present the data sure. and not be so excited as I am today. Uh, they they won't really dry monotone. Yeah, doctors get pissed when you're happy. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they don't <laughs> want anyone who's promoting, so I yeah. understand. They I, want I they, they want the data and they want to make their own decision. Yeah. If they're excited, that's fine. So, uh, it's it's l- having an eye towards bone density and then building it. All right. And so there's two different so, ways to do so that. That would be the first thing you'd recommend, though, <laughs> just in terms of the three things. Yeah. All right. So have a strong chassis because that, that matters a lot. All yeah. Right, what's the next most important thing for people? Just they want to perform better, not just in the gym, but just in life. Variable resistance. So, okay. like, let, for example, if, like, like, a real, like, easy way to get some variable resistance gains. If, if you're a guy who really doesn't do any type of exercise, get in a push-up position. Start doing push-ups. And when you can't do them drop to your knees put your knees against the ground push away from yourself so now you're doing the up part of the push-up with your knees then when you get to the top lift your knees up and give yourself the negative of your whole body weight okay so just the resist just the lowering so you're basically cheating through that they call it cheating i hate that because i love cheating it's great well you're (laughs) well it's like a biohack for how to get (laughs) how to get to a greater level of exhaustion like i said the greater the exhaustion the greater the effect okay so so you're exhausting yourself you're forcing reps that's a neat hack okay yeah so you drop to the knees push yourself up lift your knees up and then in the negative in the concentric motion you give your 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 whole body weight and then do it again and do it however many times you can do it until absolute fatigue and you'll see just a tiny little bit of like what X3 can do, but that's variable so, resistance. You're changing right. the resistance. So, so strong chassis would be number one, and yeah. number two would be switch it up to so get the variable resistance. All right, third most important thing you can do to be a high-performance human. Stability. All right. Like this is one-legged squats. This is buying a balance board while you're watching your favorite TV show. Just you're stand on a balance board. Orange is the board. new black, okay. and you put the balance board in front of you, and you just stand on it and let your stabilizers keep you there. You don't even have to think about it. These are muscles. This is exactly what's going on on, uh, on vibration. Like, yep. like the hormonal effects of stability firing, like the, the data sets weren't all on whole body vibration platforms. They were in all types of different things. Uh, one of them was just a, like a percussor test. Mm-hmm. Where somebody would put a percussor on on a, on a, a Achilles tendon, I think it was the Achilles, one of the tendons, and forcing the muscle to fire because you're altering the length of the tendon, so firing in spinal reflex to protect the joint, but it had the hormonal effect. Got it. Yeah. So, so if people want to be high performance, have a strong chassis, get variable resistance, and then be more stable. 
And these yeah. have a combination of neurological and hormonal effects that just right. generally make, make you make you stronger, more energetic, yep. things like that. Okay. Beautiful answer. Yeah. All right. You've been listening to John Jaquish, who is a founder and creator of X3 and OsteoStrong. I guess with OsteoStrong, I don't know if you're a founder, but you're a medical no, director. No, 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 I'm not. No, they, they had started the, uh, okay. before me. And, and I, your I medical like, director, I think, is your title. So uh, right I'm, I am the uh, director... Jeez, look at your arms. Dude. That's that's <laughs> insane. All right. <laughs> um, the uh, what what is my title there? It's a medical and scientific advisory board. I'm a director okay. of medical and scientific. Th- there you go. And uh, I would encourage you to, if you're interested in this stuff, you just learned how to do a push up that gives you some of these benefits. And if you're a biohacker and things like that, you might want to check out the X3. And no matter who you are, OsteoStrong is, I think, going to be a, a really big game changer because it's such a small amount of time for a really big thing. All right, let's officially end the show for people who are driving, unless when you get to work, you want to go to bulletproof.com slash YouTube, and then you can see me getting my ass kicked by the X3. We'll just do some curls real quick so you can see what the gear looks like. Nice. All right, let's do it. I'm rolling. Okay, so there's two configurations. You can either have it like this or double the band over. So for a deadlift, you double the band over. What we're going to do is just a basic yeah, curl. Yeah, yeah. Right. Just right. So I'm standing on the Stand Yeah. All right, I'm pretty tall here, so I'm going to bend down yep. pretty good. I'm going to yep. normal, normal pull. Yep, so stand up straight. Now, a couple principles. Constant tension. So at the bottom, don't walk out. Okay. Just like this. Bent. Right, so slightly bent. You're going to curl up to the top. This is pretty heavy already. You're not going to get your elbows out in front of your okay. hands. You're going to be right here because right. you don't want to turn it off. Because okay. as soon as... I as soon like as there's like 30, 40 pounds on it already. Is that... Uh, there's probably 40 pounds. Okay, right cool. Now. So yeah, it's, and it's going to get a lot. And when you're done, I'll tell you what you're actually doing at the top. Good deal. Uh, now, remember, as you do it, you're going to start do, going yeah. here, and then you're going to, as soon as you can't get here, you're going to diminish the range. Okay. And then you're going to do shorter and shorter reps, and basically until you can't move. All right. In terms of breathing, what do I want to do? Exhale as you come up. Okay. Uh, yeah. Too high. Right. So stop. Keep, keep going. Okay. Keep going. Yeah. Again. Just stop again. Another. Yeah. Another. Okay. Another. I'm just going to keep going. Pops a little bit. There. Okay. All right. Keep going. All right, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, good, up, down. Okay, now diminish the range. Don't relax. Keep going. Good, good, good. Now get get it right there. So right in that range, right in this range. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, shorten it up a little bit more. Keep going, keep going. Basically, you want to keep going until you can't move. Keep going. Keep going. You're only doing one set. Yeah, we did, we did this before. Keep going. Come on. Come on. I want to see like one inch reps. You can't barely move. Perfect. 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 You're good. That's it. So that is the best bicep stimulus you have ever had. Oh, I, I can feel it now. Do I need to do the best? Uh, that's all I need to do for my biceps today, or would I just, like wait five minutes and do it again, or would I? Just you're you're done for two days. I mean, like I'm I'm gonna feel that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. We we get a lot of feedback from users. It's yeah. hilarious. Like I can't stand today. <laughs> kind so, of thing. Yeah. So when you do one set, because the stimulus uh-huh. is far more powerful. Than you'd ever get from a static weight because you're very the resistance. You took more tissue to fatigue. And so the, the growth stimulus, the central nervous system is saying, all right, we gotta grow like we've never grown before. Now, before I do anything, meditation, exercise, I think it's gonna increase the amount of the body. I usually take a keto prime and unfair advantage just for more <laughs> mitochondrial stimulus just so I can make all the energy required. Right. Is that a good thing to do before this? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, cool. I feel like I wanna pound some now. Awesome. All right. Thanks, man. Awesome. At the end of the show, John and I were chatting, and he just decided he's going to offer a 10% discount code to people who want to give this a try who are Bulletproof fans, partly because he's a Bulletproof fan and just because, well, we did this on the fly. So if you want to use code Bulletproof on the x3bar.com website and save 10% to give this thing a try, hey, that's cool. It saves you about 40 $42.90 $42.90 or something. Hey, there you go, uh, which is uh, which is super cool. So give this thing a try if you want to save some time on exercise or not. It's it, It's a cool thing, and when you try it, you'll see what I'm talking about.